Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Healthy Libraries program through Steinberg Medicine with the American Heart Association and the Suffolk County Cooperative Library System. Today, we're going to talk about smoking and vaping. So just before we begin, a little bit about the Healthy Libraries program and who we are. The Stony Brook Medicine's Healthy Libraries program is a partnership with the Public Libraries of Suffolk County, the Suffolk County Cooperative Library System Outreach Services Department, and is supported in part by the American Heart Association of Long Island. This program is an interdisciplinary team of public health, nursing, and social work students whose aim is to do the following. Provide evidence-based health information, screening, and case management to a diverse community of patrons in the public library setting. Refer patrons to promote access to appropriate health and social service programs locally that will address their health and social support needs. And for students to experience an interprofessional team and demonstrate the core competencies based on the Interprofessional Education Collaborative. So a little bit about our program and who are our key members of the program. So some student leaders, we have Gwyneth Mercep, who's an undergraduate student in health science, Myself, Philip Massaro, who's a nursing student and a senior nursing student. We have Winnie De Los Santos, who's an undergraduate student in the School of Social Work. We have Christine Weber, who's a graduate student obtaining her master's of social work. We have Dr. Ben Scott, who's the professor and director in the program of public health. Dr. Mariana Lasala, who's the chair of the Department of Undergraduate Studies in the School of Nursing. Dr. Denise Snow, clinical professor in the School of Nursing. Leah Topek Walker, licensed clinical social worker and the field education coordinator for the School of Social Welfare. Jessica Kuz, health science librarian in the School of Medicine, program in public health and biomedical informatics. And Gabriella Pandafelli, who's a graduate student master of public health and our coordinator and director for the Healthy Libraries program. I'm gonna hand it off to the rest of the nursing students who can introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Rebecca Larson. I'm a nursing student, a senior nursing student. Hi, my name is Cindy, and I'm also a senior nursing student here at Stony Brook University School of Nursing. Hi, everyone. My name is Christina Lay. Um, I'm a nursing student, class of 2021, with, along with my two other classmates. All right, thank you. So just a few learning objectives that we're going to discuss throughout the webinar today. So by the end of this webinar, participants will be able to understand the effects of smoking and how harmful it is to the body. We want to make sure that we understand what vaping and e-cigarettes and jewels are, identify the chemicals found inside e-liquid and understand the effects on the body, understand how vaping causes damage, identify factors associated with tobacco product use, understand the relationship between COVID-19 and smoking, identify ways to help yourself or a loved one quit smoking, and identify resources to aid with the cessation or stopping of smoking. So just before we begin, we ask everyone to please uh, plead their, keep their microphones on mute. If you would like to ask a question, please enter the question into the chat and we will absolutely work on answering your question at the end of the presentation. All right, we appreciate everyone joining us today. We're gonna go ahead and get started. All right, so let's begin. Um, what is smoking? Why are we still being told how bad it is? Uh, smoking leads to disease and disability and harms nearly every organ of the body. More than 16 million Americans are living with a disease caused by smoking. For every person who dies because of smoking, at least 30 people live with a serious smoking related illness. Smoking causes cancer, heart disease, stroke, lung diseases, diabetes, and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD, which includes emphysema and chronic bronchitis. Smoking also increases risk for tuberculosis, certain eye diseases, and problems of the immune system, including rheumatoid arthritis. And smoking is a known cause of erectile dysfunction in males. Smoking is the leading cause of preventable death. Um, worldwide, tobacco use causes more than 7 million deaths per year, 
more than 480,000 deaths per year in the United States, including more than 41,000 deaths resulting from secondhand smoke exposure. On average, smokers die 10 years earlier than non-smokers. If smoking continues at the current rate among US youth, 5.6 million Americans younger than 18 years of age are expected to die prematurely from a smoking related illness. This represents about one in every 13 Americans aged 17 years or younger who are alive today. So this is a short video on what smoking does to your lungs. Let's talk about what smoking cigarettes can do to your lungs. For one, smoking can cause both immediate and long-term damage. The chemicals in cigarette smoke reach your lungs quickly every time you inhale. Your blood then carries the toxic chemicals to every organ in your body. Smoking can damage and destroy cilia, the tiny hairs that line your airways and sweep out mucus and dirt to keep your lungs clear. Once you lose enough cilia from smoking, you get smoker's cough. <coughs> Teens who smoke can develop smaller, weaker lungs that never grow to their potential size and never perform at maximum capacity. If your lungs can't perform to full capacity, you can't either. And the effects on lungs don't stop there. Of every 100 lung cancer deaths, over 80 are the result of smoking. Cigarette smokers are up to 20 times more likely to develop lung cancer than non-smokers. Here's the good news. If you stay away from cigarettes, you can save your lungs from the deadly effects of smoking. All right, so let's move on to the specifics um, of nicotine use. So what is a vape or an e-cigarette? Um, vapes or e-cigarettes are battery powered devices that heat a liquid solution, usually but not always containing nicotine, turning it into an aerosol that can be inhaled. They come in many shapes and sizes. Most have a battery, a heating element, and a place to hold the liquid. The liquid is held in a tank or pod. They can be disposable or reusable. Users inhale e-cigarette aerosols into their lungs. Bystanders can also breathe in this aerosol when the user exhales into the air. Using these devices is referred to as vaping. What is a jewel? Juul is a brand of e-cigarette that is shaped like a USB drive. Like other cigarettes, Juul is a battery powered device that heats a nicotine containing liquid to produce an aerosol that is inhaled. All Juul e-cigarettes have a high level of nicotine. According to the manufacturer, a single Juul pod contains as much nicotine as a pack of 20 regular cigarettes. Juul is one of a few e-cigarettes that use nicotine salts which allow particularly high levels of nicotine to be inhaled more easily and with less irritation than the free-based nicotine that has traditionally been used in tobacco products, including e-cigarettes. Approximately two thirds of Juul users aged 15 to 24 do not know that Juul always contains nicotine. So this is just a, uh, um, a small graph on the statistics of vaping and smoking. Um, so tobacco product use among high school students. And I'd like to point out that about 27.5 of high school students use e-cigarettes. The next leading being cigars and then cigarettes, smokeless tobacco, hookahs and pipe tobaccos. And I'd so like to carry this over to my classmate, Cindy, and she will continue. Hi, everyone. So with the rise of e-cigarettes, the question remains of, are e-cigarettes safe? So while smoking can cause lung cancer, breast cancer, emphysema, heart disease, and other serious diseases, those diseases usually develop after decades of smoking. In contrast, in 2019, it became clear that vaping could cause seizures and serious lung damage after just one year, possibly less, based on CDC reports of patients hospitalized for lung damage caused by vaping. Since e-cigarettes also contain many of the same toxic chemicals as traditional cigarettes, there is a reason to believe e-cigarettes can cause long-lasting inflammation, which can lead to chronic diseases like bronchitis, emphysema, and heart disease. 
The COVID-19 pandemic has raised even more concerns about the safety of vaping. Youths ages 13 to 24 who have used e-cigarettes are more likely to be diagnosed with COVID-19, be tested for the virus, and to experience COVID-19 symptoms. So some chemicals found inside the e-liquid inside e-cigarettes contain nicotine, tetrahydro cannabinoid, which is THC, and cannabinoid oil, which is CBD. Also, vitamin E acetate, propylene glycol, and flavoring such as diacetyl and vanillin, which creates a vanilla flavor, ethyl mitol, which creates a sweet bakery-like flavor, and malic acid, which creates a sour and fruity flavor, as well as heavy metals such as nickel, tin, and lead. So we must understand what nicotine does and its effects on our body. So it is a highly addictive stimulant chemical. It is absorbed into the bloodstream and to the adrenal glands. The adrenal glands releases adrenaline and causes an increase in blood pressure and heart rate, which may contribute to the hardening of our arterial walls and leading to a heart attack. It also activates the brain's reward circuits and increases the levels of dopamine, which reinforces rewarding behaviors. And it can slow brain development in teens and affect mood, memory, concentration, and self-control. And since some since some e-cigarette products also have THC in it, we also have to understand what it what effects it has on the body. So some short-term effects include ultra senses, ultra sense of time, change in mood, difficulty thinking and problem solving, impaired memory, hallucination and or delusions when taken in high doses, paranoia, breathing problems, increased heart rates. And in long-term uses, one may experience cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome and problems with child development during and after pregnancy. So how does vaping cause damage? So vaping can cause damage by creating popcorn lungs or bronchiolitis obliterans, which is an irreversible damage of scarring tiny air sacs in the lungs, leading to narrowing airways. And it causes shortness of breath, coughing, and wheezing. Vaping may also cause vaping-related lipoid pneumonia, primary spontaneous pneumothorax, which is a collapsed lung after vaping, and electronic vaping-associated lung injury. E Valley. So CDC reports have found that vitamin, S, vitamin E acetate found in some THC containing e-cigarettes or vaping products is strongly linked to the E Valley outbreak. So how are youths getting these products? And they're getting them through in-store purchases. So according to the 2018 National Youth Tobacco Survey, 16.5% of middle school and high school students um, who are also e-cigarette users under 18 report obtaining e-cigarettes from vape shops in the past month and 9.8% from gas stations and convenience stores. Youths are also getting it from online purchases because it does not need to, because online stores do not need to show purchase of age by just so, and they could just select yes I'm over 21. So according to the 2018 new National Youth Tobacco Survey, 5.7 middle school and high school e-cigarette users under 18 reported buying e-cigarettes from the internet and other social sor sources. So from the same survey, 72.6% of middle school and high school e-users cigarette e-cigarette users obtain e-cigarettes from social sources such as friends. So what are some factors that are associated with youth tobacco use? So it could be from social and physical environment. Mass media normalizing tobacco product usage can make young people want to try it. And young people are more likely to use tobacco products if their parents uses these products as well. There are also biological factors Smoking during pregnancy may increase likelihood that the child will smoke cigarettes regularly in the future. And mental health. So there's a strong relationship between youth smoking and depression, anxiety, and stress. And other factors include lower socioeconomic status, lack of support or involvement from parents, and low self-esteem or self-image. So 
So what are some early preventions against youth vaping and smoking? So in the national state and local programs, oh, and national state and local programs have shown to reduce and prevent youth product use when implemented together. So these um, implementations include higher costs of tobacco products, prohibiting smoking indoors, raising the minimum age of sale for tobacco products to 21 years, community school and college policies that encourage tobacco free areas. So in the next slide, we're discussing a organization that helps youth. Um, it's an organization that tackles against youth related tobacco usage. So we want to help teens make better choices. And Candle is a program called Community Awareness Network for Drug-Free Life and Environment. It's a nonprofit organization found in Rockland County, New York in 1982 with the goal to prevent substance abuse and violence through education and support programs for young people at risk. Candle is supported by the New York State Department of Health, the New York State Office's Office of Addiction Service and Support and other state organizations due to their success in educating young adults and their families and professionals. There is an anti-vaping campaign aimed to present materials in a way to engage young adults. So for a really big question is, is vaping safer than smoking? And the answer is no. So electronic smoke, electronic cigarette companies claim that vaping can be used as a way to quit smoking, but much more research needs to be done about that. Vaping companies have targeted teens and created a new generation who thinks smoking is quote unquote cool. Many vapes have more nicotine than traditional cigarettes, which is highly addictive and can cause damage to the developing brains of teenagers. And the CDC recommends that people do not vape because many of recommends that people do not vape because many of the chemicals in the vapes still need to be tested. And many of the cases of serious lung injuries are resulted from people who vape. So now I'm gonna pass it on to my peer, Rebecca. Hi, I'm Rebecca. COVID-19 and smoking. As a smoker or a vapor, is the risk of getting the COVID-19 virus greater? Smokers, those include users of cigarettes, cigars, heated tobacco products, e-cigarettes, vapes, jewels, etc., may be more vulnerable to contracting COVID-19 as the act of smoking involves contact of the fingers and possibly contaminated cigarettes with the lips which increases the possibility of transmission of viruses from hand to mouth. Smoking water pipes, also known as shisha or hookah, often involves the sharing of mouthpieces and hoses, which could facilitate the transmission of COVID-19 virus in communal and social settings. On the right, we have a diagram from the World Health Organization of smoking and a hookah pipe. Are smokers likely to get more severe symptoms if infected? Smoking any kind of tobacco reduces lung capacity and increases the risk of many respiratory infections and can increase the severity of respiratory diseases. COVID-19 is an infectious disease that primarily attacks the lungs. Smoking impairs lung functions, making it harder for the body to fight off coronaviruses and other respiratory diseases. On the left, there's a diagram from the World Health Organization labeled COVID-19 and tobacco use. And it it's, says the effect of coronavirus can be worse for people who use tobacco. Tobacco use leads to disease and disability. The coronavirus attacks the lungs. If your lungs are already damaged by tobacco use, the effect of the virus will be worse. And tobacco affects your immune system meaning that you're less able to fight off infections like the coronavirus.
What does the WHO, the World Health Organization, recommend for tobacco users? The WHO recommends quitting tobacco use. Quitting will help your lungs and heart to work better from the moment you stop. Within 20 minutes of quitting, elevated heart rate and blood pressure will drop. After 12 hours, the carbon monoxide level in the bloodstream drops and returns to normal. Within two to 12 weeks, circulation improves and the lung function increases. After one to nine months, coughing and shortness of breath decrease. On the right is a picture from the World Health Organization called the effects of quitting smoking. Health improvement that takes place after quitting smoking, it projects these aforementioned benefits. So how can I quit smoking? Here are 10 ways to quit smoking. We've included the 800 number, 800 quit now, 800-784-8669. One, nicotine replacement therapy. So there's two ways to, to obtain this therapy. The first way is call your provider for help to quit using uh, tobacco products or vapes. There's prescription nicotine nasal spray, prescription non-nicotine, stop smoking medications like Uporion or Zyban, and Vernalacine Chantex. There are also over-the-counter options, which include nicotine patches, nicotine gum, and nicotine lozenges. Two, avoid your personal triggers and substitute your behaviors. Avoid situations that you would normally smoke in. For example, instead of taking breaks at work with your smoke buddies, take it with someone who does not smoke. Substitute behaviors where you would normally smoke. For example, if you smoke in the car, keep lollipops handy. If you smoke while talking on the phone, keep a notepad and a pen nearby to doodle instead of smoking. Three, delay. If you feel like you're going to give in to your cravings and smoke, tell yourself you need to wait 10 more minutes and then do something to distract yourself. Four, get physical. Physical activity can distract you from tobacco cravings. Some examples of things you can do is take a walk and do not bring your cigarettes, do some squats, run up and down the stairs a few times, or do some household chores. Five, chew. We talked about occupying your hands with doodling. You could also occupy your mouth with something chewy or crunchy. Suggestions are sugar-free gum or hard candy, or even carrots or celery. Six, don't tell yourself, I'll just have one. One will usually lead to more. Distraction and altering behaviors is much more successful. Seven, practice relaxation and mindfulness techniques. Smoking may have been your way of coping to deal with stressful situations. Finding new ways to relieve stress like yoga, journaling, guiding meditations, which you could find on YouTube, or deep breathing exercises. Eight, phone a friend. Reach out to a friend to distract you with conversation and support. FaceTime or Zoom is a safe option now while we are all trying to stay socially distant and healthy. Nine, there's also online support groups. Online support groups such as on Facebook or other online support groups, which can be found by doing a simple Google search. I have attached a link of one such group.
called whyquit.com. Ten, remind yourself of the benefit. Find your personal reason why to quit, whether that be for your own health and longevity or to be around to see your kids, nieces, nephews, or grandchildren grow up. Listed below are some national helpline resources, uh, the Disaster Relief Helpline, the National Suicide Prevention Helpline, the National Domestic Violence Hotline, the National Child Abuse Hotline, National Sex Assault Hotline, and Suicide Prevention Hotline are listed here. If you need immediate help, call 911. Listed here also includes some local helplines on Long Island and Suffolk County. All right, so this is the information to contact us, Stony Brook Medicine Healthy Libraries Program. So linked here is our YouTube page and our Facebook, as well as our website, email and phone number. If you have any um, additional health-related questions or if you're interested in scheduling a one-on-one -on -one appointment with a member of the team, you can call us at 631-216-8220 or email us at healthy underscore libraries underscore program at stonybrookmedicine.edu. Um, if there are no questions, we can begin by asking you some questions. Um, so what can parents and educators do to prevent and reduce the use of e-cigarettes by young people? If there are no responses, we can just continue on to the next slide and we have some things listed there. So for parents, learn about the different shapes and types of e-cigarettes and the risks of all forms of e-cigarette use for young people. Talk to their children about the risks of e-cigarette use among young people. Express firm expectations that their children remain tobacco-free. And finally, set a positive example by being tobacco-free yourselves. As for educators, learn about the different shapes and types of e-cigarettes and the risks of all forms of e-cigarette use for young people. Development, implement, and enforce tobacco-free school policies. And um, reject youth tobacco prevention programs sponsored by the tobacco industry. These programs have been found to be in ineffective for preventing youth tobacco use. So another question we have for the audience is, does anyone have any specific concerns related to a family member smoking? Okay, if there aren't any concerns, we can move to the next slide. And if you do have any concerns about your family member smoking or you want to help a family member or a loved one um, end smoking, you could start a conversation, ask open-ended questions to, un to help you understand what a smoker who is quitting going through. Maybe asking questions of what made you start smoking or what things have been stressing you out lately. You should listen to what they have to say. Don't lecture. Lectures, nagging, and scolding won't help your friend or family member quit smoking. It might just put you on their bad side and they might not come to you for help when they really need it. Help offer distractions and be patient and positive. If there are no any additional questions, this concludes our presentation on smoking and vaping. Thank you for listening. Thank you.